Today we're going to start trigonometry again. So in order for us to learn some new things in the world of trig, we need to first just remind ourselves how we first discovered trigonometry. And so we're going to look at the basis of trigonometry, which is angles between 0 and 90 degrees. And the reason we look at this is because trigonometry is based off similar triangles and the ratios between the sides in all of these triangles. So whenever we are working in trig, trigonometry is always based on an angle. So we need to have an angle that we're talking about, especially in a right angled triangle. So if I have some angle theta, we can then, based on the fact that I've got a specific angle in this right angle triangle, we can remind ourselves that the trig ratios are based on the ratios of specific sides. So we call the side over here the opposite side. We call the side on the angle the adjacent side. And we call the longest side across from the 90 degree angle the hypotenuse. And based off this, we have we created our fundamental trig ratios, and they were sine of theta, which was opposite over hypotenuse, and cos of theta, which was adjacent over hypotenuse, and then tan of theta, which was opposite over adjacent. Okay, and so we defined what the trig ratios were. And we discovered that the ratio of these sides in all triangles were the same. And because they were the same, we could always work out then what the angle must have been. So let's uh, expand on this idea slightly and look at how we can solve simple problems in trigonometry for angles between 0 and 90 degrees. So here we are given the fact that sine of theta is equal to 2 over the square root of 5. We are told that theta is acute, meaning it's less than 90 degrees. And we want to find the exact value of all of these things. And most of the time this will be told without the use of a calculator. So our first step is to just understand when they tell us sine theta is equal to 2 over square root 5, what they're describing is the sine ratio, and all the sine ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. And so the trigonometric ratio you're given is just describing the length of the sides in a right angle triangle. And so what we could do is if we had a right angle triangle, we could call this theta, and based on our knowledge, we could write that the opposite side must be 2, and the hypotenuse must be the square root of 5, and then we could calculate the adjacent side using Pythagoras. So the hypotenuse is 5, so we could say the square root of 5 squared take away 2 squared must be equal to the adjacent side squared. And so what we'll get is 5 minus 4, and so we'll get the length of this side as 1. Now, we were given the ratio of sine of theta equal to 2 over the square root of 5. And from this, because we've now filled in the rest of the triangle, we could work out all the other values. So A is asking us for sine squared theta. Well, sine of theta is 2 over the square root of 5, and we want to square that because it's sine theta squared. This works out to 4 over 5. Right, the next one says work out cos of theta. Now, we could have calculated the value for theta and then worked out what cos was from that. However, because we know all the sides of the triangle, we know all that cos is, is adjacent over hypotenuse. And since we've now worked out the length of the adjacent side, we can work out that cos of theta here must just be equal to 1 over the square root of 5. 
Right, C wants tan of theta, and tan of theta is just opposite over adjacent. And in our triangle, the opposite is 2, the adjacent is 1, and so we'll just get 2. And finally, for D, D requires a little bit of working out. We want sine theta all over tan theta minus cos theta. So we'll start with sine theta, which was 2 over the square root of 5. And we are dividing all of this by tan theta, which was 2 minus cos theta, which was minus 1 over square root 5. And from here, what we'd have to do is simplify this as much as possible. So we can start with the denominator. And we can get a common denominator on the denominator by making that the denominator. So we'll get 2 square root 5 minus 1 over square root 5. We have a denominator that's common in both fractions, so they can be cancelled. And so what we're left with is 2 over 2 square root 5 minus 1. If we wanted to, we could take this a step further, and we could rationalize the denominator. So this is, we'll have to use a conjugate here, so we'll have to multiply this by 2 square root 5 plus 1 over 2 square root 5 plus 1, because then we're just multiplying by 1, and... If we multiply this out, we will get 4 square root 5 plus 2, 4 square root 5 plus 2, all over, we'll get 4 times 5 minus 1, which is 19. And that would be our final answer. Now, based of this idea, we could come up with a something called exact, well, trigonometric exact values. And they are quite common, and they are important for us to know, understand, and remember, because they come up all the time, and they save us a lot of time if we know what their values are. So the first one we'll look at is if we had a triangle, and more specifically a right-hand, right-angled isosceles triangle, if we made the length of the equal sides equal to 1, Using Pythagoras' theorem, we could say the hypotenuse is 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2, and so the length of this would then be the square root of 2. And so if we define all the sides, this as opposite, this as adjacent, this as the hypotenuse, we could find some exact values for 45 degrees. So, sine of 45 degrees, well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that is 1 over the square root of 2. Okay. Now, your calculator will actually rationalize this by multiplying through by square root 2 over 2 square root 2. So, this could also be written as the square root of 2 over 2. Then we could say, well, what's cos of 45? Cos of 45, because this is an isosceles triangle, will have the same value. And again, this could be written like that as well. Finally, tan of 45 degrees. Tan is opposite over adjacent. That's 1 over 1, which is just going to give us 1. So that's why tan of 45 is 1 degrees. So when we're think thinking about exact values, the reason we're using a triangle with these lengths is we're trying to simplify them as much as possible. Since trigonometric ratios have to do with similar triangles, we're trying to think of the simplest triangle that could be 45 degrees. Now we could do the same thing in an equilateral triangle. So here we have an equilateral triangle with, let's say, well, the angle here is 60 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide this triangle in half. And so what that's going to do is divide the angle up here and also divide the length of one of the sides in half. So let's say that all the sides of the equilateral triangle are 2. That would mean this small piece would be 1. And we could calculate the length of the side opposite 60 degrees by saying, well, take the hypotenuse squared and subtract 
the other side squared and then root the answer. So we'd get the square root of 3. And so from here, we could find the exact values for 60 and for 30 degrees. So we need to define first what is 60 degrees. We'll say this is the opposite. This is the adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. Once we've defined the angle, we can then work out the trig ratio. So we can say sine of 60 degrees. So sine of 60 degrees is, well, opposite over hypotenuse. So we'd have square root of 3 over 2. Cos of 60 degrees. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos of 60 would be a half. And then tan of 60 degrees. Tan is adjacent over sorry, opposite over adjacent, so we would get the square root of 3 over 1, which would just be the square root of 3. Now, we can redefine the ratios by looking then at 30 degrees and saying, well, to 30 degrees, this would be the opposite side, this would be the adjacent, and this would be the hypotenuse. And so sine of 30 degrees in for 30 degrees, the opposite side would be 1, and the hypotenuse would be 2. And that is why sine of 30 degrees is a half. Because in its simplest form, that is how we could define it. Cos of 30 degrees, cos would be adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side here is the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. And finally, tan of 30 degrees, tan is opposite over adjacent, so the opposite side this time is 1, and over the square root of 3, which again your calculator will rationalize to square root of 3 over 3. So now we have defined values for 45, 60, and 30 degrees, and we can use them to solve simple trick problems. So for instance, if we get asked to calculate the exact value of sine of 45 times sine of 60, we'd need to start off by knowing what sine of 45 is. So hopefully we can try and memorize these things, but if not, we can just use our calculator because it'll generally give you the exact value. So sine of 45 is 1 over the square root of 2, and sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. Now we can simplify this to the square root of 3 over 2 square root 2, which we would then want to rationalize. And we would get then the square root of 6 over 2 times 2, so 4. Okay, having a look at the second one, cos squared of 45, we need to know what cos of 45 is. So cos of 45 is 1 over the square root of 2, and we're squaring that. And so cos squared of 45 degrees would just be 1 over 2. Right, question C might seem a bit complicated. However, if we have a look carefully, this question is being asked in radians, and so we just need to change our mind into radians and think, well, what is pi over 3? Pi over 3 is just 180 divided by 3. And so 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. So this is just tan of 60 degrees. So tan of 60 degrees is the square root of 3. And we're adding that to sine of pi on 4. Pi is 180 degrees, divide by 4, that gives us 45 degrees. So sine of 45 degrees is 1 over the square root of 2. And we're dividing this all over 1 minus cos of pi on 3, so again that's 60 degrees, so negative cos 60, and cos of 60 is 1 over 2.
which using some arithmetic we could simplify and we'd get 2 square root of 3 plus square root of 2. Okay, I'm not going to go into the process, but you could simplify that by yourself.